Okay. What we did in the previous uh, two or three segments was set up the foundation for a treatment of mass transport in the continuum physics setting. Over uh, this segment and maybe one or two more, we are going to use the setting to treat a very important problem in materials science. Um, in fact, in some sense, uh, you know, one of the canonical problems in materials science, and that is the problem of phase separation. Okay, so that is the plan, and we'll get started. So we are going to look at a uh, continuum treatment of phase separation. Okay, um, here is the setting for it. Recall our uh, free energy density function. And uh, I believe we are calling it chi. And we made it a function of concentration. Okay? Problems of phase separation are uh, driven by a free energy density that is characterized by the following sort of shape. We have C on the abscissa and chi on the ordinate. So phase separation uh, becomes possible when the free energy has this type of a shape. Okay, what is um, most characteristic about this free energy is that it is non-convex. Okay, which means that there are regimes where the second derivative of chi with respect to C is less than zero. Okay. And for the way I've drawn it, that is roughly this region, this regime of concentration. Okay? It is in this regime that um, chi double prime, which is the, do that properly, chi double prime, right, which is the second derivative, is less than zero in that region. Okay, so how does this work? Well, here, here's how it works. To understand it better, let's uh, label that concentration in the first minimum as C uh, sub alpha. That in the second minimum is labeled C sub beta. All right, and um, okay. For uh, future use, I'm also going to define um, C sub gamma, which is the mean of um, C sub beta and C sub alpha. Let me think about it. Is this what I want? No. I, I, sorry. What I want is the, sorry one half of the difference of the two concentrations. Okay, so the way we've set it up clearly C beta is greater than C alpha. I'm defining C gamma to be one half of the difference. All right, um, okay. So here's what happens here, and, and here, here's why phase separation tends to happen in these, in these types of, uh, if, if you have this type of a free energy. Now, it uh, turns out that uh, because of this tendency in physics for uh, the free energy to be minimized, okay, uh, the system is going to try to find a, uh, uh, is going to try and occupy a concentration, attain a concentration, which is, um, which gives it a minimum free energy, 
okay? And clearly C alpha and C, B, C beta are uh, concentrations which uh, minimize the free energy locally, okay? So um, let me state that here. C alpha, C beta are uh, free energy minimizers, okay? All right. Now, uh, and clearly, if you, if you have a concentration of C alpha or C beta, things will, you know, the system will be very happy. It will be in a minimum and all is good. Okay, it will be in a local minimum and, and all is good. But now, what happens if you have a concentration between C alpha and C beta, okay? So if you have a concentration in this regime, right, uh, what tends to happen is that actually the free energy can uh, attain an even lower minimum, right, by doing something different, right? It will actually phase separate into um, some part which has Cl alpha and some part that has C beta. And here's why that happens, okay? Um, uh, l l let me let me actually to show you where how that happens. Let me just redraw this picture because that because what I drew up there has already become a little busy. So let me redraw here. We have C, we have chi. I'm going to draw a uh, non-convex free energy. Okay, and uh, okay. So this is C alpha, C beta. If you happen to have a concentration in the range between C alpha and C beta, the system will not actually go to a free energy on the curve, okay? Supposing, for instance, that this is our actual concentration, okay? It's between C alpha and C beta. Now, if the system would actually follow that free energy curve, that is the, con that is the free energy it would attain, right? However, it can attain an even lower free energy if it follows what is called the common tangent, okay? So that's the common tangent, okay, to the curve in the region between C alpha and C beta, okay? Because it, it, I, we call it the common tangent because it, uh, it's, it's tangent at two points, okay? So this is... common tangent okay now if the system develops a mixture where some of it is in C alpha and some of it has a concentration of C beta okay it emerges that the actual free energy can lie on this common tangent right it, it can actually lie at this point on the common tangent okay which has a lower free energy clearly than the system would have by being at that point, okay? Now, how does the system attain that sort of state? Here's what it does, okay? The system, in this case, the system forms a mixture, okay? Um, forms a mixture of two phases, right? And the two phases have concentrations C alpha and C beta, okay, All right? I'll go to the next slide to continue here. Uh, and just so that we have the picture, let me just very quickly reproduce the free energy, okay? And we have the common tangent, C alpha, C beta. Okay, so it forms a two-phase mixture, right, at two different concentrations, C alpha and C beta. Uh, 
these two phases are labeled alpha and beta okay obvious right so alpha is the phase that has concentration c alpha beta is the phase that concentration c beta okay but remember that this is the actual concentration of the overall um, substance right this is the average concentration what i've labeled as c okay and the whole point is that rather than develop the free energy that lies on the curve the system would rather have the lower free energy right along the common tangent how does it form that well it forms a mixture of the alpha and beta phases and here is how it it, it sort of apportions itself in these two uh, different phases okay the phases are labeled alpha and beta and uh, have volume fractions as follows okay so the volume of the alpha phase okay um, divided by the total volume of the mixture is equal to c beta minus c divided by c beta minus c alpha and the volume of the beta phase is 1 minus this quantity that I just wrote and that turns out to be c minus c alpha divided by c beta minus c alpha. So what we see is that the mixture, okay, actually apportions itself into two different phases, alpha and beta, all right? Let me circle them, alpha and beta, right? And what I've written here are the volume fractions of the two phases. Essentially what you're seeing is that it sort of apportions itself in proportion to the concentrations C beta, C alpha, and C, okay? All right? So it forms this mixture, and by so and, and by so doing, it should be clear to us that because this is the these are the volume fractions of the total of, of the phases, right? The total the the total free energy okay, is the following. Chi alpha, okay, which is this. free energy, sorry, chi alpha is that, okay, um, chi alpha times that volume fraction, chi alpha times V alpha plus chi beta times V beta. Okay, where V beta is this one. Sorry, chi beta is this one. Okay, all right. And so it is that the total free energy of the system is there. This is chi alpha V alpha plus chi beta V beta. Okay. Clearly, it is lower than the free energy it would have if the system were to actually follow the free energy curve that I originally drew. In that case, this would be what is called the, this, the free energy that would be attained by the system actually going to the value on the curve dictated by the concentration C. That is called the homogeneous free energy okay and what we're seeing is that this quantity clearly from that curve right but right from from if, if you look at where this sits on on the on that plot it doesn't sit on the curve it actually sits on the common tangent right clearly the total free energy which is given by this phase mixture right what I have here this clearly is less than the value of chi 
simply by obtained by evaluating C. Okay. So the system finds that rather than adopt the homogeneous free energy that is dictated by the free energy curve, it can form a lower free energy by separating into two different phases. Okay, the phases are alpha and beta, right? What I've circled here are the volume fractions of the two phases. They are defined by the concentration C alpha, C beta, and the actual average concentration of the mixture, which is C, All right? And um, this last uh, circle formula gives us the, the actual free energy that the system attains by doing this phase separation. And clearly, it is lower than the homogeneous free energy it would have if it just followed the free energy curve. This is the basis of phase separation in alloys, okay, or, or in, in, in alloys or, or in general in materials.